the heart's job is to create the pressure by contracting. The fluid's job is to dissolve substances and carry them places. And the blood vessel's job is to keep the fluid enclosed, thereby creating, a, keeping the pressure on the fluid so that the fluid then moves a great distance. And in this way, we can move things like oxygen, glucose, carbon dioxide, and urea very great distances and allows organisms to be that much bigger. Now, the reason why we're transporting things to cells and away from cells is to maintain concentration gradients. If we, keep, if we effectively supply oxygen to these cells, we will have a high concentration of oxygen out here and a low concentration of oxygen in the cells, obviously, because they're using the oxygen up. And therefore, we're going to get diffusion of oxygen from a high concentration to a low concentration in the cells. Similarly, if we keep removing waste materials such as CO2 by the constant flow, we are going to maintain a low concentration of the waste materials outside the cell. And obviously, they're being produced inside the cells, so CO2 will diffuse from a high concentration inside the cell to a low concentration outside of the cell, and so we keep that process going. And as long as we keep that process going, very importantly, we keep on supplying glucose and oxygen and removing carbon dioxide, um, and so respiration can carry on effectively in the cells. And if the cells can carry out respiration, they can create ATP, and if they can create ATP, they will be able to continue functioning, working. Okay? In fact, we must remember this idea when we look at atherosclerosis and blood clotting, which is effectively what happens to disrupt this system. Okay, guys, let's talk about atherosclerosis. <coughs> we can talk about it in two stages. Okay? So first, we can talk about the events of atherosclerosis that could be happening in a coronary artery. And then we could talk about the consequences of that for the cardiac cells that the artery was supplying with oxygenated blood. Okay, so let's begin. So we have our artery here. Um, we've got the elastic tissue here, the thick layer, uh, smooth muscle, and then on the inner layer we've got the endothelium. Okay, so that's that one layer of cells that form the inner, uh, innermost layer of that artery. <coughs> So, the, the first stage is that the endothelium gets damaged due to high blood pressure, okay? So if our endothelium gets damaged, for example, okay, then what happens is that this induces an inflammatory response. So white blood cells come in essentially to repair the damage that's been caused. So, uh, things like high blood pressure can cause damage to the endothelium, Next thing is that white blood cells are recruited. Okay, so we have our white blood cells that arrive on the scene um, to repair the damage. This is part of an inflammatory response. So the white blood cells then enter the area. Now, once they've entered the area, they then move behind the endothelium, so you can say they move into the artery wall, whereupon they start to absorb um, saturated fats and cholesterol that might be circulating in the form of LDLs. So remember these low density lipoproteins are packages of saturated, um, packages of saturated fat and cholesterol that are circulating around, okay, and usually are found uh, in people with a poor kind of diet uh, to exercise ratio, okay? So <clears throat> we have these HDLs, uh, sorry, LDLs, right? So the LDLs and the white blood cells then absorb the saturated fats and cholesterol from the LDLs and they start to uh, form an atheroma, okay? This then starts to form an atheroma. 
this forms not on top but behind the endothelium. So effectively the endothelium gets fixed, but we have this buildup behind which is a result of absorbing the uh, saturated fats and cholesterol from the low density lipoproteins. Okay? Now if if this carries on, so if this person has you know constantly high level of LDLs in their blood, then the white blood cells will keep absorbing the saturated fats and cholesterol, and the atheroma will then grow to a significant size behind the endothelium. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if this happens, if this happens, um, then now let's talk about the consequences. So an atheroma can form, and uh, this can develop into a, uh, an atherosclerotic plaque, getting calcified, um, and, and can reduce the elasticity of, of the artery. But let's talk about what can happen to the cells that this artery was then responsible for supplying with oxygenated blood. So remember further down the line, yeah, uh, remember arteries are going to be branching off into arterioles, and arterioles are going to be branching off into very small capillaries through which diffusion can happen. Okay? Now, when, what can happen to these cells as a consequence of what's happening in the artery? Well, remember that the whole point of a mass flow circulatory system was to ensure the flow of blood which is carrying things like oxygen and glucose. Now what can happen is if we reduce that flow, if we reduce that flow up here because we've narrowed the lumen, so we've narrowed the lumen of the artery up here so we've reduced the blood flow. Because we've reduced the blood flow, further down the line, effectively, we've reduced the supply of oxygen. So around these cells, this capillary now has a reduced oxygen concentration. So because of the reduced oxygen concentration, we've got a smaller concentration gradient. So we've got oxygen here, very small, but instead of having a high level of oxygen here, we've now got a reduced level of oxygen. And because of that, the rate of diffusion of oxygen into these cells is going to be much lower. And in fact, it might be insufficient to support all of these cells. So if this was a coronary artery, we are talking about cardiac cells here. We're talking about cells of the heart that need oxygen in order to keep uh, contracting. Yeah? So if they can't do that, then these cells could stop functioning, in, in a worst case scenario they could uh, just die altogether, and there'd be a significant part of the heart that is not contracting, right? And that, that could then result in a heart attack, okay? So this is atherosclerosis and its consequences, okay? Okay, uh, just widened my artery here. Um, so that we can talk about blood clotting, okay? Now it's important to remember about blood clotting that actually the process of blood clotting is, is, a, is a good mechanism to prevent blood loss when a blood vessel is damaged. The problem is that in people with cardiovascular disease risk factors, this blood clotting happens when it shouldn't. And it forms blood clots that then end up, in, uh, end up blocking blood uh, vessels and capillaries and so on, that then have um, negative effects, okay, so unintended consequences. So let's talk about blood clotting. So again, high blood pressure, so we have a, a damaged blood vessel here, okay, and the collagen that should be concealed by the endothelium is now exposed, okay. So the exposed collagen then activates cells which are in the bloodstream, usually they're not activated, but the presence of the collagen fibers 
then activates platelets. And these platelets, what they do when they're activated is release a chemical called thrombo, thromboplastin. So activated platelets release thromboplastin, and thromboplastin, in addition to calcium ions and indirectly vitamin K, so both of those are needed to convert prothrombin, so this is an inactive form of, of an enzyme, prothrombin is converted into the active form thrombin. And thrombin is an enzyme that converts the normally soluble fibrinogen into the insoluble fibrin that forms a meshwork of fibers that traps more platelets and more blood cells or red blood cells in order to form a final blood clot you know, preventing blood loss through this damaged area. This is what happens under kind of normal circumstances. So in some people, for example, uh, smokers who have a high level of nicotine, nicotine in their blood, now nicotine makes platelets more sticky. And because of that, the whole, this whole process is much more likely to happen spontaneously unregulated, uh, not simply as a way to seal a uh, ruptured blood vessel, but rather just spontaneously and in places that are, it's not supposed to form. Now what can happen because of this is that you can get a blood clot, for example, forming in a, in a, in a narrower blood vessel. So you've got this blood clot forming there, and what's going to happen is it's going to block this artery and if it does block the artery then again just like in atherosclerosis similar thing applies we reduce the flow of blood this reduces the flow of blood it reduces our concentration of oxygen and as a result of that then we're reducing the rate of diffusion of oxygen into cells if we are reducing the rate of diffusion of oxygen into cells. We are then going to be uh, reducing the rate of respiration that's happening in these cells. And these cells could then uh, stop working properly. They could also die because of the lack of oxygen, which was caused by the lack of blood flow, which was caused by the blood clot causing a blockage in uh, an artery. Okay? so. That's blood clotting and how it can have uh, consequences on tissues, uh, cells and tissues, okay? So this could be happening in, in a heart, for example. It could also be happening in the brain. So this, this could be an artery leading to the brain. And in that case, these could be brain cells. And in that case, we could be looking at a stroke rather than a heart attack, okay? So that's blood clotting and cardiovascular disease.